Is there inflation? Yes, there is. Is it because of a lot of stimulus? Uh, I just, I don't think that American stimulus has caused worldwide inflation. The problem I have is this, like, if you're honest, what did these child tax credits really do? Now, there are problems, and we can get into the specifics of it, but basically, if we're being as generous as possible, you used to get $2,000 for the child tax credit, or what, what, 2000 and now that number is either, depending on the age of your child, 3000 or 3600 My contention is, when we look at the rate of inflation, that still leaves people in a poorer economic decision today than before when Biden took office. And what, well, if you compare it to like just the past year, that's possible because things are like obviously historically fucked when it comes to pricing. But assuming that child tax credit stays forward and assuming our economy recovers and prices stabilize, which they will, um, I don't think you can argue that like an extra, a 50% increase in your child tax credit has suddenly been nullified by a 50% increase in the cost of all goods. It's like CPI hasn't increased that much. I, I disagree with that. Okay. But yes, it has. Consumer price index is at a 30 year high. It's at six point, uh, let me get the exact number. This is from October, which is the most recent data we have. Uh, the consumer is 6.2% October to October. That's the largest inflation surge that we've had in more than 30 years. And in fact, I believe I read if that trend would continue for seven years, that would mean every seven years, the price of everything would double. If that would continue. Yeah, if it, cons that, if it increases like, that rate for seven years, but like we have worldwide inflation at the moment. I try to blame okay. this on some particular thing or to try to say that we expect that to continue at that rate. Um, I don't know why, but I guess, well, I do know why, but people always do this when we're experiencing like these historically great or historically horrible economic events. Um, people will say things like, if this happens for five more years, then this will happen. Or I saw people do this with, and it's unrelated to Jeff Bezos, where the Amazon stock uh, jumped a ton like one day and people were like, if this continues for the next year, uh, Jeff Bezos will be worth over a hundred trillion dollars. I was like, why are we going off of what? Like we're in a historic period in terms of like supply chain crunch, in terms of probably some true inflation. Um, the idea that it's going to continue at this rate for the next seven years is, is a pretty big claim. I don't think any major economist is making. Okay, so that's why I wanted to start with COVID because again, if we're comparing Biden to the previous administration, because you could say, well, this is a crazy time. The things are different, so it's hard to look at historic things when we're talking about a pandemic that's affecting so many things. Okay, that could be true. So let's look at what the situation was before COVID hit for Trump compared to what we have for Biden if things get rosy and the pandemic goes. Even then, we could see that the economy was humming along under Trump. One of the only reasons that Trump, in fact, let's be honest, Trump was not a likable guy to the people that he needed to vote for him. Uh, obviously, his base likes him, whatever. But he needed independents or people that were sort of in the center to vote for him. The only way he was going to get that because of his foibles personality wise was the economy. The economy was kicking ass, right? Then COVID comes. And yet, this isn't the benefit of the doubt we give Trump. We don't say, well, a historic, you know, pandemic, you can't really blame Trump for the economic fallout. We say, nope. The buck stops with him. So given that, you say, well, we're only, this is only uh, inflation for a year. Yep. And that's how long Trump, Biden's been in office. He has been terrible. To be, to be clear, I, when I, so if I'm, and I don't believe I said this ever in this debate, and if I've ever said this, wow, this was really stupid of me to say, I, don't, I hope I've never said this, I wouldn't blame the economy during the coronavirus pandemic under Trump as being horrible. I, like, I'm not going to say like, wow, Trump really <laughs> fucked up the economy there. And Dem and I'll be fair, a lot of Democrats did say stupid shit like that. Like, oh, look at this last year under Trump and the economy. But yeah, no fucking shit. It was a fucking pandemic. Um, the, the economy was humming along under Trump. Um, like you said before, though, um, if we're going to say that like, well, all the shots are being delivered before Biden stepped into office, the economy was humming along uh, before Trump stepped into office. But I mean, yeah, he relatively didn't fuck with things and he seemed to just let ship go as it did and the economy continued to move the world economy continued to move and for the most part i think it did pretty well yeah for sure under trump for the most part yeah um but my 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 chief criticism isn't going to be the economy my chief criticism is going to be what are the interventions that the president made into the economy now when i take a look at something like um the coronavirus relief or we can get into like the infrastructure bill and then i compare that to trump's targeting of like tax cuts it feels like biden is taking a more bottom up approach versus trump taking a more top down approach in terms of their uh, stimulus or their infusion of cash into the economy and i tend to prefer biden's approach there to trump's okay that could be in a hypothetical sense of you know what your ideology says is how you want to approach the economy but the reality is the decisions that biden made certainly didn't stymie inflation and all of the plans you're talking about things like the child credit or the infrastructure bill and all of that one of the big reasons we have have inflation is the massive amount of spending now not all let me 
steel man, not all of this spending was done under Biden. Some was under Trump, right? But with the lockdown slash spending that we saw, it was one of the largest transfers of wealth that we've seen from poor and working class to the wealthy. Now, I blame Republicans, Trump, but certainly you blame Joe Biden for this as well. And Biden's going on an even more insane spending spree. And what's even crazier is when you're spending trillions of dollars to the tune that Biden is, you would expect that that would stave off short term economic problems, right? Like if you made me president. I wouldn't know, but well, if you made if you were president and you were like, you know what, I'm just going to spend 30 trillion dollars today, that would probably do a lot to buttress people's bank accounts if you divvied it out in a certain way. It would cover oh, well, over, sure. but it did. It did. Well, but and it's still bad. It did, and it's still bad. That's the point I'm making. And one of the things what do you that mean, people what's get bad when you say that, can what, you just be a little bit more? What, yeah. when you what's say bad? bad? Yeah, like people's like the cost of living for people. There are people that were paycheck to paycheck are worse off now. There are people that are having to sell their houses that wouldn't have otherwise. There's people that can't afford to pay rent. This is despite the fact that they're getting all of these extra monies that caused all of this inflation. So it didn't help out in the short term. And in the long term, now we're seeing inflation. So when you say, well, people have an extra 1600 in their pocket if they have a child. Well, there's problems with that. First, that extra 1600 probably doesn't meet the cost of inflation that we've had year over year from last October to this October. So whatever you think about Biden's plans, if we say we give him credit for the child tax credit, why wouldn't we also give him credit for the inflation and the supply crunch and the energy crunch and all of those sorts of things? Is there inflation? Yes, there is. Is it because of a lot of stimulus? Uh, I just I don't think that American stimulus has caused worldwide inflation. I think that there are a lot of reasons. Well, not a lot of reasons. I mean, primarily because of things stemming from the coronavirus. There are supply chain crunches that are driving up the cost of a lot of things in the United States and across the entire world right now. Um, the idea that the, the like, I'm um, sorry. So cost of living is increasing for sure. I don't know what influence the president can wield over that, especially when things related to the cost of living might be like, for instance, like cost of housing or like cost of food, stuff that would show up on the CPI. When all of this stuff is increasing worldwide, I don't know. I, I'm just not entirely sure what the president can do to alleviate that other than giving stimulus to people. Um, you, we talk about like people living paycheck to paycheck. I don't know how we can say that they were worse off when there were people on unemployment insurance because of the boost that were getting more than they were even getting at their job. Um, I, I don't know which of these people are worse off. Um, and then in terms of people that can't afford to pay rent, rent is increasing in a lot of large cities, but this is a problem that has continued to happen probably for the last 20 years. Um, I, again, uh, I don't know what the president can do to exert influence over housing prices, unless we're going to say he should take a Bernie plan or AOC plan and go like world or a uh, nationwide rent control or something. Uh, I, I just I don't see these as being areas that the president could inter intervene in. Um, now, as I said before, to start this, I'm not necessarily looking at the president for the economy. I'm looking at the interventions that they make in the economy. If Biden hadn't had done any of these things, hadn't provided any stimulus, cost of living would still be increasing. People would still be living paycheck to paycheck and rents would still be increasing as well. These have all been trends that have been happening for, for Jesus, for decades at this point. There would still be a worldwide supply crunch. It's not like people would be better off if there was less stimulus. If anything, there would be even more problems. So in that case, I would consider that to be a positive intervention, even if inflation is happening at the moment. Okay, so, but this would only make sense because you're saying, well, you can't blame Biden for the historic inflation here in the United States because it's happening worldwide, right? So if you say, but we do give credit to Biden because he can't control that inflation for having interventions, but that only works if those numbers worldwide are similar to the United States. And what you could see is from Statista.com, right? You could see inflation 2018, this is year to year inflation rate, 2018, 3.5%, 2019, 3.4%. This is worldwide, by the way. 2020, 3.2%. 2021, 3.5%. So it's around 3% every year. Inflation's up like 0.2% compared to year over end than what we would expect. And yet we have historic 6.8 inflation when it comes to consumer prices. Uh, so we can see that the policies that Biden's issued, the United States policies have doubled the inflation from what we're seeing on the average in the rest of the world. Also, that's okay, just- Real quick, when we say average in the rest of the world- I don't care about the average of the rest of the world. I care about the average of like the OECD, right? I don't know how much inflation <laughs> like countries in Africa or in, in Southern, like South America or whatever. I, I don't know what type of inflation or supply chain things. Like I, I, I just not as, I'd be more concerned with 
comparisons to other OECD countries because there are countries that are ahead of us inflation in inflation. So like Brazil and Turkey are, but then there are other countries that are like kind of comparable in terms of what the U.S. is experiencing inflation. So I'm seeing like New Zealand, Spain, Poland, Russia, South Korea, Mexico. Now the U.S. is definitely sitting on the higher point of this, but like these are all countries that have experienced a lot of inflation as well. But then if you go down, um, there are some countries that are like experiencing like deflation. Uh, Argentina is a big one, China, Indonesia, India, Costa Rica, the Netherlands, Japan. So if you're going to average all of them out, I don't really know like what that tells us. Um, right. I'm looking at a Pew Research article and it says that the U.S. is the eighth highest annual inflation rate um, for the third quarter of 2021. Um, but I, I don't think that we're like doubling the rest of the world. I think that there's a lot of different countries experiencing inflation for worldwide reasons, but they probably experience it a bit in different ways. Well, that could be true, right? But even still, the data the worldwide on the average is going to matter because there are other things that we'd be able to look at. Like, for example, we could say, well, the U.S. has high inflation and so does the U.K. I don't know. I have that data in front of me, right? But even if that was the case, it could be because the U.K. has had very similar policies than Joe Biden, right? And it could be countries that had these more lockdown mandated oriented countries or decisions had higher inflation. That would still be reason to blame Joe Biden for the inflation just because Japan did it and the U.K. did it and Australia did it, too. doesn't matter that the decisions of Joe Biden. Biden didn't directly lead to this. And that's just yeah, consumer I, inflation. At, that's just yeah, consumer inflation, right? When we look at producer inflation, it's even worse, right? So producer inflation is at the highest that we've seen year to year, which is 8.6% in October. That ties it for the highest we've ever seen since recorded history. Now, the reality is you could say, well, this was inevitable, but that's not what the Biden administration was telling us. They were telling us inflation, no, it's not going to be that bad. It'll be fine. It's not going to be that bad. Then they said, well, it's temporary. It's just a little bit of temporary inflation. And now they're saying, well, it's not necessarily a bad thing. Maybe we need to live more like Europe. Maybe a little inflation is a good thing. And while this is occurring, we can see that large conglomerates and banks like BlackRock are buying up a bunch of real estate that the average person's no longer able to afford. So this sort of stuff, like it, it just, it's incredible that like all of a sudden the buck stops here doesn't matter when it comes to economic policy when we can see regardless of how you put it the average person in this country by far is worse off economically right now at about a year into joe biden's presidency than they were before it that's the truth so yeah, so when we look at those that list of countries, I, like this is the reason I'm having a hard time saying like stimulus is causing this. So Japan, my understanding is Japan gave more stimulus than any other country in the world. They're experiencing deflation. So it doesn't seem like stimulus alone is explaining all the inflation that's happening in the United States. Um, and then we we keep throwing a lot of other things here. When we say like it's not a bad thing, I don't know any Democratic leaders that are saying they're like, oh yeah, five percent inflation, um, quarter after quarter after quarter is it okay? I don't think any Democratic leader wants that. Um, but then also again. And, you know, we can talk about like the buck stops here or whatever, like inflation is is the purview of the central bank um, or the U.S. Federal Reserve. Uh, you know, I, it, the U.S. Federal Reserve sets its targets. It's hard to tell how much inflation right now is real versus um, transitory, uh, how much it's going to go away. Like it might be the case that we're experiencing massive inflation and it continues to happen. And it absolutely is a problem. It might be a case that we are super crunched right now in supply lines all over the world. And it ends up not being as much of a problem in a year or two or three. Or maybe the consumption around the world is increasing so much that it will continue to be a problem. But I just I don't know if I would say that like in a time when the entire world is experiencing so much uh, inflation um, and in a time where there were countries that did more stimulus than us, like Japan, who aren't experiencing inflation or experiencing deflation. It just seems really hard to say the, it, the stimulus in the United States is the primary driver of inflation. I think the most I was able to find because I was everybody's obviously curious about what's causing it. I think I read like a Wall Street Journal article that said that there might have been some small contribution there, but I don't think any economists are saying, like, oh, yeah, it was the U.S. stimulus that definitely is causing inflation in the United States. Like it still seems to be that people universally believe that it is a massive supply chain crunch. And hopefully as that resolves itself over time, um, we would expect to see this fall. Okay, but again, I'm not saying it's purely the stimulus. I'm saying it is a it's a conglomerate of all of the decisions that we've seen our leaders, particularly Joe Biden and the Democrats that have been in charge in all of that, you know, House, Senate, and presidency. They own this, right? And when you say like it, it's just well, Look, like what decisions? I, what do you mean by that? Well, yeah. well, there's all sorts, right? Like, for example, decisions that come to energy, right? Stopping and leading guidance to lower the domestic production of fossil fuels, which required us to import more from overseas. There are decisions they made on lockdowns and things like that that helped lead to the supply chain crunch. All of these things, in addition to the mass amounts of spending we're seeing, is what's going to cause inflation. And I think that if you were, like, if you really think about this, right, the idea that you're saying, well, look, we can't take the world average amount of inflation. Right, because it could be that the, some countries are really high and some are really low. Well, but that seems to be a cop out because your entire argument that's kind of 
saying we don't blame the Biden administration for this inflation is, well, it's like this around the world. Well, that's not true. Now, the world is facing similar problems. They're facing a pandemic. They're facing supply chain crunches and other things like that. And yet they don't have near on average the inflation we see. You cite one country, you say Japan. Okay, but maybe Japan had other policies that buttress them more against the sort of inflation that we see with the Biden administration. I don't know how you could look at the United States being so far above average in poor economic performance and say, well, we can't blame Biden for any of that, but we could give him credit for interventions, but we can't look at the rest of the world uh, on average. It, it just doesn't make sense. Like it, the Biden administration just, and the Democrats own this. I mean, we can say that, but I, 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 just, I don't think anybody agrees with that. I just don't think that's true. If you look at all the countries and you look at how they've doled out stimulus. Now, if you want to talk about other policies that could be used to buttress against this type of inflation, then yeah, we can talk about those potential other policies. But like when we look at the amount of stimulus given in different countries, um, so particularly um, there's a thread that I'm familiar with where people are talking about like the average budget deficit to, to look at deficit spending during these things. And then you try to draw like a line to see how many of these countries experienced inflation. It, there just doesn't seem to be a strong trend there. It seems to be other things that are unrelated to the amount of stimulus or spending that countries did. Um, now, if you want to talk about again, and I'll say again, if you want to talk about like other policies, that's fine. Um, you mentioned like stopping domestic production of fossil mm -hmm. fuels. Um, it, so my understanding is I think that they said that we're not allowed to drill on like some federally owned lands, but I don't think the majority of our fracking and the majority of the um, uh, refining or the oil production in the United States happens on those lands. I don't think that that was a huge like driver in, in not, I'm pretty sure we're still like the largest fossil fuel producer, I think in the world at this point. Um, I don't know if, if halting production on federal lands, if anything, if you wanted to argue that seems like a virtue signal to me more than anything. Um, kind of like when you talk about doing things for federal prisons and that's 10% of the prison population. I don't think that was a big deal. Um, when you talk about how lockdowns are leading to um, local supply chain crunches, um, I don't know if the United States has locked down anything. Um, people are still going to work. You, you know, people are masking up or getting vaccinated or whatever. But um, I, I don't know if the United States is like uniquely locked down when it comes to our supply chain stuff. It seems like other countries were way more insane about like I, I say insane, but were way more strict when it came to locking down their production related stuff. So then let's just say hypothetically, then why do you think the United States is doing so much worse than all of these other countries when it comes to our economic standing? Um, oh, man. The, um it, this gets really complicated because I think that the arguments between economists, and I'm not ready for this debate, the arguments between economists are how do we measure inflation? And I'm sure if you've read about this, you've heard of this. Some people will fight over whether or not the CPI versus the PPP uh, versus other types of measures or indexes are more appropriate when it comes to measuring inflation. I don't know if going by, because the CPI is generally what people cite, consumer price index, um, but other people will argue that like the types of goods that are included or aren't included aren't as relevant today when that index was created. So we shouldn't even be using this as an index for inflation. That's one potential. Maybe we don't index it correctly maybe there are better ways to do it a second possible example is the idea that maybe in the united states maybe shipping things from overseas is a unique problem that the u.s has that makes it harder for us to get goods i don't know if shipping overseas is necessarily as big a deal for european countries as it is for the united states if we're getting stuff from other countries a lot of it has to be shipped obviously not nafta or um, whatever the new u.s mexico canada agreement is called usmca um obviously not from those two countries but if we're shipping stuff from china right supply line issues related to cost of fuel or like backups in harbors or stuff related to shipping things overseas is probably going to be way more relevant when it comes to backing up U.S. production than it would be for other countries that might be able to use other modes of transportation or get more of their supply safe from the European market, which is the largest unified market in the world. I, now, I don't know 100% if that is the case, but I mean, off the top of my head, I could think of some things that would probably be more relevant than U.S. stimulus spending, which Republicans infinitely say is a huge driver of, of inflation that never has been. If spending money, increasing the money supply at the rate that we've been doing this quickly is certainly going to predictably lead to inflation. Just one thing. We can move on to the That's next topic. Favorite. One yeah, thing, like my final point in this, just something little that I wanted to correct. I don't know if this is true. I wasn't prepared for this. So I just uh, duck, duck, go this. This is the first thing that comes up from the Washington Post. It says 42% of coal, 24% of crude oil, and 13% of natural gas came from public lands in 2017. So the ban on drilling and things like that from public lands seems like it would have a major uh, uh, major glut in our fossil fuel production, which would be one of the reasons that we went from a net exporter to Joe Biden, who supposedly is pushing Green New Deal type stuff, begging OPEC to increase production. We're now again reliant, again, in one short year, we've gone from being a net exporter, which by the way, was one of the greatest thorns in the side of enemies we have like Russia, the fact that we got into that market and was the biggest exporter in the world. Now we are someone that's begging foreign producers that we've had all of these problems with to increase production. 
Um, so <clears throat> firstly, we're, the, the prohibition was on new drilling. So that doesn't stop our, our current extraction of oil from places in the United States. Um, I don't know how many new drilling sites, uh, I'll be honest, you said that you weren't prepared for this. I'm not necessarily either. I don't know how many new drilling sites were picked out that people really wanted to go into uh, in the United States. Uh, in terms of like whether we're like, uh, have, have become a net exporter or not net exporter, like it, just because we export a lot of fossil fuel, um, and I would have to read up on this because of this, like we still import fossil fuels as well. Like there's like refinery processes that you do where you might export certain petroleum products. You might import crude oil for different reasons, even if we are a net exporter of other petroleum products. Um, yeah, the, the idea that, um, yeah, yeah I, 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 don't, I just, I don't know what the point of that is. If you're trying to say that, like the United States, like, um, has like ceased production of petroleum or has, has our production even fallen? I believe so. I I'm not going to bullshit you, though. I don't have the data in front of me. Uh, but my understanding, if the production hasn't followed and we went, it just seems to logically make sense. If production has remained consistent and we went from someone that was net exporting and making a large amount of money doing it to now we're begging OPEC to increase their production, that doesn't seem to make sense unless our production's fallen. 